Hi everyone, it's Abby and Elizabeth from The Right Move. As a follow-up to our sharing on integrated developments, we've gotten many inquiries asking us about our thoughts on the new integrated development at Passeries, the Rice Residences. So here's our take on it. We're trying a new format for reviewing developments, so we're going to start off with a quick run-through of the main details such as the location and so on, and then we'll end off sharing with you three things that we like and three things that we don't like about the development. Let's start off with the main details. The Rice Residences is an integrated development, so a very quick introduction on them. There are only 15 developments in Singapore that can be considered integrated development because they need to have residential, commercial and an MRT all in one. We've done a deep dive into integrated developments in our recent Facebook live sharing and we'll share the link in the description below. And specific to the Rice, on top of the commercial, residential and MRT, we'll also be expecting a bus interchange, polyclinic and town plaza. URI's intention is to turn this place into a focal point of the community. The developers are all green, a really experienced property developer owned by the richest man in Malaysia, Robert Kwok. They have a huge portfolio of local projects and current projects like Royal Green, 4th Avenue and Juniper Hill at Kitima. They are no stranger to managing large mixed-use developments as they also own Tangling Mall and Great Wall City. So yeah, no major concerns on the developer. In terms of size, we are expecting 480 residential units. The residential portion will occupy level 3 to level 11 with their car park at level 3 separate from the commercial car park. On the commercial component, it's stated in the tender specs that it shall be no smaller than 269,000 square feet and no larger than 386,000 square feet. So we'll be expecting a shopping centre in between the size of Compass 1 at Sengkang and Waterway Point at Pongo. The commercial component will occupy three levels, basement one where the car park will be and the first two ground levels. So that's what we know about the project for now and we'll do another video once we have more details, so stay tuned. So, on to the three things we like about the rice. Number one, location. And when we say we like the location, it's not because it's beside the MRT, right? We're going to break it down into two parts. For the first part, if you're an investor, you'll be looking at the proximity of your property to employment hubs that will supply you with your tenant pool. So for the rise, you'll be drawing its tenants from major employment hubs in the east like Changi Airport, SUTD, Changi Business Park. We've done a fair bit of rentals in Pasir Ris and Tampines and we must say that these units hardly go vacant for a long period of time. And given the long construction runway, we'll be expecting this project in about 8 years. We expect the aviation industry to be more or less recovered from the crisis. For the second part, those of you who have been following us know how much we like condos They are within the vicinity of a huge number of BTOs as they provide a steady stream of upgraded demand. So for the rise, we are in very close proximity to the huge number of BTOs that will be coming up in Tampanese, with Tampanese North just a stone's throw away. With an upcoming lack of land supply in the northeast, we would be expecting some spillover demand also from Sengkang and Pongo. With that, you capture three out of the top four HDB towns with the largest number of BTOs hitting its MOP in the next 10 years. So with that, it gives you visibility on who you're going to be selling to. Again, something we emphasize very heavily on. That leads us to point two, strong profits of recent condos in Passeries. We've talked about this in great detail in our video on most profitable developments in Singapore. The contributing factor would be what we mentioned earlier on the proximity to huge pools of HDB upgraders. We've referenced this table which compares the performance of new mass market condos from a period of 2014 to 2018. As you can see, Coco Palms which is located right beside the rise coming out on top. And as seen in this updated table, Coco Palms has continued its good price performance till today. What's interesting is you notice a good resale volume of units of all sizes from 1 bidders to the large 4 bidders. Which may be counterintuitive to a lot of you because who's buying 1 bidders in Pasir Ris? So here we have actual resale data to back it up. Point 3 on why we like the rise is land sale price. So all green won the tender at 684.5 per square feet per plot ratio. Referencing to the age prop, the break even works out to a relatively low per square feet of 1,204. It's quite a bit lower when comparing to the two other integrated developments on the market right now, Woodley Residences and Sengkang Grand, who have break even prices that are around 500 per square feet and 200 per square feet higher, respectively. If you look at this table, referencing the difference between the break even price 
and the average sale price of a development, you can see that Woodley Residences has a 10.5% difference, while Sengkang Grand has a 22.1% difference. So we've worked out the average PSF for the rise based on the different percentages for your reference. And for the last table, if you watched our sharing on integrated developments, you'll know that one of the indicators we found to be accurate in predicting good performing integrated developments is the difference between the sale prices of the development compared to other new launches in the same district. We've also worked out their estimated per square feet for the rise based on this parameter for your reference. And with that, we go from three things that we like to three things that we don't quite like about the rise. So number one, timing of the launch. So while the land cost is comparatively lower than that of the other integrated developments in the market right now, because the developer has not launched the project yet, it's anyone's guess how they'll be pricing their units. Judging from the launches of Penrose and Claiborne, the developers are taking advantage of their low land cost to price their units competitively to sell. However, that is a big if because if you look at the data of unsold developer inventory, it's coming down really quickly, dropping below the 5-year average in Q3 2020. If the launch is to coincide with the commencement of the on block rush, we could see a repeat of 2017 and 2018 where the developers were able to capitalise on the FOMO mentality to charge higher prices. Number two, competition for tenants. There are nine condos within 1km of Pasir Ris MRT. In terms of direct competition, we will probably only consider Coco Palms, Dines and The Pallet, who have already about 2,700 units. So this would definitely be a point to consider if you're looking at the rise for investment. Number three, number of units. At 480 units, it's a little bit borderline. We tend to prefer developments with above 500 units to ensure sufficient volume in terms of transactions as well as sufficient facilities for tenants. But that said, we feel this is a very minor point. So that's it for our first video on the rise. Do like and subscribe as we'll continue to put up more videos as and when more information comes along. And for those of you who are waiting for the rise to be launched, there are plenty of things that you can do to prepare for it. So for pre-launch, we will recommend doing the following. Number one, you want to reference and make sense of the performance of units at Coco Palms, DNS, neighbouring developments, right for example, which facings, sizes and layouts perform better. Number two, understand real estate, the real estate market updates. Number three, analyze the resale prices in the area. Number four, understand the preferences of buyers in the vicinity. Number five, work out your finances. Number six, timeline planning. Number seven, explore what are some of the alternatives while waiting for the launch. Number eight, planning your exit strategy. We've also done multiple guides catering to different groups of buyers and we'll be happy to share all of that with you guys. Simply drop us a comment or text us and we'll see you soon. Bye! Bye.